Hello, and welcome to the Cutar Crusaders, episode 186 for March 1st, 2016. I'm not sure if there's anything special for March 1st. For a second there, I thought it was April Fool's Day. <laughs> no. Uh, my name is Rainbow Plasma. I'm the organizer and host of the podcast, and today I'm joined by... <sighs> Burn to one, the, uh, uh, like, sometimes the special guest coordinator. Heh. <laughs> Hey. I'm Photoguy317. I am the media manager and this week the editor. Hey. Hey. I'm hey. Atmos Park. <laughs> I'm the special guest coordinator and DeviantArt and stuff. Hey. Not me hey. this week. And, hey. uh, and we also have. <laughs> Who's the special guest that I coordinated? I'm the very, very special guest. All Hi, right, guys. Well. It's Nazi Goring or Naz. Yeah. Hello. Yay. So yeah, we Hi. we have Naz on this week. Hi. Um, we hey. had you on a, about a year ago, almost exactly a mm. year ago. It's yeah. been a fair while. Yeah, and um, at the time we talked about the fact that we're going to have you back on at some point, mm. and uh, you know we, we decided that we wanted to have you back on, but in a bit of a different capacity than last time. Mm -hmm. Well, you we almost had you one last time. <laughs> last time we were interviewing you. Um, but this time we wanted to do something a little bit different. So um, I'm not really sure how we're going to explain exactly what we're going to be doing on this podcast because it's a Let's little bit it. up on the up in the air. So I agree we should probably just do it. And I think the way that we should start is um, to refresh people's memories or in case people hadn't seen your last interview exactly kind of who you are and, and what you do and maybe you can talk a little bit for the people who have seen your previous interview about some of the stuff that you've been up to in the last year since we talked to you last yeah for sure um my name is naz um i go by nazi goring i'm pretty much everywhere on the interwebs um but i'm a freelance plushie maker so i make plushies full-time um, and I guess today we'll be talking about mainly pony plushies. Um, but my last interview, we sort of showed off my work. So, um, you know, it's been about a year. So obviously um, my skills have gotten a little bit better since then. So um, did you guys want to talk about some of the, um, the deviations that I've brought to have a look at just to show off what I do? Yeah, so you've done yeah. some pretty unique things in the last year. We talked in your mm. last interview about, like, some of the more... <laughs> I'm going to use the word generic, but please keep yeah. in mind that it's just because I don't have a better word for it. But it's kind of like the stuff that you did a lot of, right? The normal-sized yeah. plushies, uh, some fancy stuff. But in the last year or so, you've done some really fancy, unique things, right? Very fancy, yeah. I talked about this. Um, I think I talked to you guys about planning this in the last interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. at the little end of it. But I was yeah. going to say the the fanciest thing we did show in the interview was like the Smaug plush, right? He had like lights mm -hmm. on the inside of him and then obviously like your OC work. But everything was on about the same size scale, which was, mm. makes this one very unique. I think I'd um just moved out of home when I made this. So I finally had enough room to, um yeah, make. I wanted to make a giant plushie for myself. So um, yes. yeah, Go ahead I and tell us what this to... is. <laughs> so we haven't mentioned that yet. <laughs> this is a... Um, <laughs> How big is she? I think she was a 42 inch tall uh, life size Rainbow Dash plushie. And wow. she lives in my sewing room yeah. now. So, yeah. So she's kind of the um, one big plushie that I keep for myself. Um, and yeah, she was just fantastic to make. I, you know, I, it's a nearly been a year since plushie. I made her. I've yeah. seen this thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's been nearly a year since I made her, and I still think she looks really awesome, which is, you know, you can't say that about every art piece that you make. So, yeah, I really like yeah. her. Crazy. That's a, yeah, it's probably yeah. a good sign, right? When you make something and a year later, you still enjoy it. Mm, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I've just been making heaps of different stuff um, since I talked to you guys. So I've sort of expanded into giant plushies and, and super detailed stuff and anthro stuff. So um, yeah. we'll talk, ring up um, Nightmare Rarity, who was literally like a really a nightmarish plush to make if you can say that <laughs> but it was cool <laughs> it was so cool I, I really wish i could have kept her like i say that about a lot of plushies i make but when i finished her i was just like holy crap like i would have been very happy if the commissioner had just said oh you know give me my money back and keep her like, <laughs> i would have been really happy with that. just make another one yeah. inside a hunt <laughs> Yeah, you've got to get past that this stuff much now. time. <laughs> I just have to take like two weeks off work and not get paid. <laughs> no, do you actually yeah. keep? Do you keep all the patterns for like every plushie you make? Oh, or do you just kind of wing it? Sometimes, um, I keep all my pony patterns because obviously I'm going to be reusing them over and over again because the body's the same, you know, 
yeah. same style all the time. But if I'm just, yeah, if I'm just making like a plush, I know that I will probably never make again. I'll, I'll just, you know, I just draw the pattern pieces on pieces of paper and I usually just end up binning them. And it's kind of good in that way as well, because when I, if I do make them again, it forces me to remake it'll be everything. Be, it'll be with better. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm. So it'll be better than last time. So gotcha. yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's no file somewhere that says like nightmare rarity, nightmarish hair. Uh, there is because I, because <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think I could improve too much on her. You know, there's nothing that sort of glares to me that says you know I should remake her better. Um, I can always tweak the pattern, but yeah, I'm definitely not going to get rid of that. Yeah, yeah, incredibly impressive. Thank you. And then I've also um started to expand into anthro plushies, um, sort of targeting sort of furry type, you know fairy characters but i've also um recently made a um chibi fluttershy which is really cute so at the moment i'm keeping her for myself i've sort of put her mm-hmm. up for tentative sale but i i kind of like her so much that i'll be quite happy to keep her for myself she so. i think is like one of my most favorite ones you've done recently that's really cool yeah she is adorable yeah she's real she's even cuter in person like she's just so happy looking like <laughs> <laughs> remember, she's based uh, on those equestria girls minis right mm-hmm. yeah yeah, Silver sent me um, the reference pictures, which was yeah, really nice of it. Also. Yeah, You posted something, I think, on Facebook. You said you were surprised that she stands. Because mm, she's, how tall is she? I think she was like 22 or 24 inches tall. Wow. And her head is is like terrifyingly huge. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that body, like, I'll send you guys some pictures that you can put up um, in the podcast later. But um, her body was like a stick. Like if you if you take the you know the clothes off the the mini figures, there's not almost nothing there. Like they're just mm. tiny little stick figures sort of thing, with this giant head. But um, <laughs> yeah, I never really intended for her to be able to stand up because her head is so huge compared to the body. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I just um I'll I'll send you guys a picture um of how big her head was. But anyway, <laughs> um. She looked really funny before I put her hair on. But anyway, I made her boots. <laughs> I made her boots um, and I put like weights in them and I, okay. I just put them in for sort of uh. um, just to, you know, fill out the bulk in the boots. But then I stood her up and because she has a wire skeleton inside her, she can actually stand up, which is really awesome. So Very cool. Yeah. I'll send you. How heavy is her head? Like I never, um, I never weighed her, uh. but it's. It's probably like four to five times, you know, as heavy as her body. Like her body just wow. weighs nothing. I'll link you guys yeah. the picture of um of what she looks like with no hair, which is pretty funny. Because I could imagine like that. That's a lot of hair. I could imagine that it's mm. a lot of weight. But can you yeah. guys see that picture? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it looks it looks like an alien. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the body was just like a stick figure. I didn't even give it feet. I just gave it like stumps, long stumps for legs. Um, Can you take the boots off? No. You would That's probably for the best, right? (laughs) Yeah. Uh. (laughs) You know, when you see those horrible pictures of like carrots that look like legs, like really like weird and mangled, it kind of looks like that. But I knew I was going to be making the giant boots. So there, you know, there wasn't much point in making her feet in those boots anyway. So, yeah. Did you ever think about magnet boots? Like sticker to walls. That has to be a really <laughs> strong magnet. <laughs> uh, yeah, never underestimate earth magnets. Yeah, yeah. those can take earth magnets. Off. I've got some big as ones. opposed to space magnets. You, you know how you have like uh, you put beans in the feet sometimes. You just get a bunch of like the Metal. what is it? Those little bucky balls or whatever, and just like <laughs> put them in the boots, like like a little beanie, yeah. beanie with eggs or something. That's, that's more annoying than your plushie burned, <laughs> squeaky one. Um, uh, it's funny. Mean? Don't squeak it. This plushie. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> dog. It's a dog mean? toy. Um, so you know, it's funny that you mentioned beans in the in mm-hmm. the feet burn because um, I was gonna ask you what exactly you put in the feet and transition mm-hmm. that to the plushie that I got from you, um, because I'm you know self centered like that, uh, and you know the, a friend of mine, DualShock, commissioned this for as kind of like a BronyCon present for me. Um, and there's champ. so many there's so many things in it that mm. I wasn't expecting to to see in a plushie. And one of them was that mm. the feet with the hooves were flat and they had like weights in them so that it's easier for the plushie to stand up. So like those are like mm-hmm. kind of like bean things, right? 
Yeah, they're literally just um, what goes in Beanie Babies. So they're like a little, like a plastic pellet sort of thing. So they just look like little grains of hard plastic. So you just put, it's like almost like a sand, like a, a thick grain of sand sort of thing. Right. And yeah, you put those in, huh. in hooves, in, in feet and stuff like that. And it just adds heaps more weight than um, stuffing would. And yeah. there's also like a flat bottom to the hooves as well. Mm. Um, so I use all different materials, um, especially in the ponies. Like there's not just stuffing, there's um, hard plastic, which is at the bottom of the feet, which is what makes them flat. And then there's the beanies in the feet and um, foam in the ears and stuff like that. So there's lots of different materials mm. that you can sort of work with, not just um, not just fabric and stuffing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're talking about these details here and, and mm-hmm. one of the things, well, I mean, one of the main things that we wanted to have you on was to give us mm-hmm. a perspective on plushy making that mm-hmm. we don't have. Um, we've talked a lot about digital art, traditional art, mm-hmm. uh, but we've never really had the opportunity or really expertise to talk about plushies as an art form, even though, you know, we, we all do believe that plushies are an art form in mm-hmm. a way. Um, and so I, I guess, you know, kind of transitioning into what we're going to do next, um, what we're going to do is we're going to try to go over, um, kind of aspects of how to make a plushie and, and through that, not necessarily, you know, it's not just going to apply to people who want to make plushies, but it'll also mm-hmm. give some insight into those people who just want to learn about a little bit about how these things are made as well. And we're also going to try to bring up examples of other plushie makers and in a way feature their art you know, um, Mm -hmm. while also talking about this. So there's no real way of me to like casually do that without explaining what we're about to do to the audience. So (laughs) I took this time to do that. Um, But I suppose unless you guys had anything else to talk about, we're just going to jump into doing that. All right, nobody else has anything to talk about. So (laughs) let's jump right into kind of how you do what you do for someone who might want to pick up uh, plushie making. Uh, first, you need a goat, and you need to sacrifice it in the blood moon. Oh, that's yeah, oh, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, w- well, what? I mean, obviously, you didn't. You didn't yeah, you that. didn't. You didn't know this. Yeah, Come yeah. On, I, I just plushy plushy making tradition. I mean, there's a reason why there's, 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 there's a reason why there's so few plushy makers. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> there's so few goats in the world. Are there, are there even goats in Australia? Yes. <laughs> that's not a crazy question okay yeah, you do, you do, no, there's, there's, there's goats in australia you haven't no, seen them not. they have those really long tails and they like hop around you don't have squirrels <laughs> you have kangaroos i don't know maybe goats they are have like, like a... pouches and they they stand on two legs yeah <laughs> right right yeah and they like right. to sleep in the middle yeah. of roundabouts okay so sacrifice <laughs> the goat step one mm-hmm. from step two okay then um you want to get a pattern to start off with if especially if you've never signed before because you know, the main, uh, I guess, challenge of making a plushie is making a pattern. And I'll just stick to ponies here because I guess that's what we're talking about. Um, but there's definitely a lot of um, pre-made patterns that you can buy, which are just fantastic to learn to sew with. So if you if you have no idea how pieces fit together on a plushie or how to, you know, use a needle and thread or a sewing machine, it's really good to practice with these pre-made patterns because the artist has done the hard work for you. Um, and then so you're going to... Just, just yeah. before before we move on there, just to clarify, <laughs> can you kind of explain just very briefly what a pattern mm-hmm. is? Okay, so uh, if you look at a plushie, you'll see that it's obviously made of fabric and it's got lines where all the seams are. Uh, and essentially the pattern is the flat design, the flat pieces of fabric that when they're sewn together create the 3D form. So, for example, on my pony heads... Uh, there's two side pieces and then there's a gusset, which is like a long strip of fabric that runs through the middle uh, to make it more 3D to push out that shape. So making a pattern is just making that 2D, um, those 2D shapes that are going to form your 3D object. Right. Yeah. So kind of like a lay... stencil that you use mm. to cut out the pieces of the fabric. Exactly. You lay over a yeah. fabric and then cut it out with. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. It's like uh, puzzle pieces. Yeah, Exactly. Yeah, so that's, that's a great point. That's a great analogy. <laughs> yeah. um, a bit add uh, to add on to that. What's the mm-hmm. best way to go about getting a stencil? You know, if you've never gotten one or used one before. 
Uh, there's heaps of people online selling them. So I would just go onto DeviantArt and type in pony pattern for sale. Um, a couple of people that I know that sell them are um, Buttercup Baby PPG. She sells really cute beanies, which are pretty easy if you're just a beginner. Um, but you can also mm -hmm. buy like fully formed like standing pony patterns. Um, there's uh, Planet Plush, whose whose name was formerly Space Voyager. She has like a, f a full mare um, pattern that you can buy. Um, so that'll, you know, I think that's one that much... we have. Mm. So you can just start off with, if you just want to make a plush for yourself once off or just make a couple for your friends, that's a really good, you know, or not a cheap way, but an easier way to <laughs> do it um, rather than yep. spending all that time perfecting the pattern if you don't have experience with drafting them yourself. Right. And then I suppose mm. when you, you know, you start mm. out with these pre-bought ones and then eventually mm. you go, okay, well, I want to change it here. I want to change it there. Exactly. And you start making your own patterns then with small improvements. So once you understand how the patterns like fit together and and you're a bit more confident, you can start experimenting with uh, making your own patterns. And it's, it is, um, it's a long uh, process to learn that sort of skill. I've been doing it for about four years now. Um, but when I very first started, I think it took me something like um, 15 pattern tests before I made like my first pony that was finished. So even mm. now, like I've been doing it for so long and, and um, it'll still, if I'm making a, a new pattern that's a bit complicated, it might take me five to seven, you know, fully sewn pattern tests to uh, create that pattern. But it does, it does get easier the more you do it. Mm. Yeah. So now, uh, is a pattern something that, like you can modify? So if you like buy a pattern from someone uh, and you wanted to like, um, I don't know, change it mm -hmm. up and experiment a bit without like going and creating your own pattern, is that something that like you you would modify a little bit before like creating your own pattern, or would you like kind of jump right into creating your own pattern after? It using really kind of depends on what those. you want to do with it because if you want to sell it, that person, you know, that artist who made the pattern in the first place might not want you to be using their pattern to make money off. Also could have so, like legal yeah. copyright on it. Mm. So yeah. think about it, it kind of like using a base to draw with. That artist might not want you to make commissions off that base. Um, right. So you can modify it, um, but technically you're still using the base of that person's pattern. So if you want to go mm -hmm. and make money off it, you know, I would really suggest just starting from scratch, essentially. Yeah. Um, and or just, finding a pattern that mm, will allow you yeah, to do yeah. exactly its commissions. Yeah. And I guess, like for learning purposes, if you if you wanted to like do that, then that's mm. not such a bad thing too. No, well, you could modify it just for you know your personal you know learning and development sort of thing. But um, mm. yeah, eventually, um, if you want to do it more professionally, I definitely recommend starting to draft your own patterns. And really, mm. um, having unique patterns is what sets you apart from other people. So you're only going to get so far making, you know, the the pony with the same template that you know fifty other people are making, sort of thing. I was going to say doing it, like doing it yourself, modifying and, and experimenting that makes it your own style. Like I can tell another growing plushie aside from anybody else's because mm. you you designed it completely. Yeah, yeah, and that's the same with you know um, most plushie makers that I know that have designed their own patterns. You can see them, and even if you know. Even if there's no writing on it to say what artist it is, you can tell immediately who's made it just from the style. Because there's a lot of important things that like uh, can be changed up in a pattern. Like mm -hmm. one of which I can think of is like the seams, like where seams are placed and how seams mm -hmm. are done. Like there's an infinite amount of ways in which you can do them, and like mm -hmm. everyone has their their choice for the best answer that looks the best. But mm -hmm. I feel like when I'm looking at patterns, like other than like basic shape. Uh, kind of how they're constructed and like seamed and sewn together is what really kind of sets a lot of them apart. Well, something that I, that, I, that, I, that I like on yours is your 3D ears, which you mm. posted a thing ages ago saying, do you like this? I, I did this test. Do you guys like it? And I loved it. Mm. And now you do it on almost all of them. And now I do it all the time. So yeah, it's just, you know, experimentation and that one sort of, um, you know, freak experiment that you do can turn into like a real selling point for your plushies, like a, a really appealing, unique thing. So, um, yeah, it's important mm. to sort of experiment with your patterns and, and don't be afraid to sort of try different mediums and, and incorporate, you know, um, plastic for hooves or beanies or whatever you want to use to sort of make your right. patterns different from what other people are making. So yeah. now you have a pattern and you've mm -hmm. made your decision whether or not you're going to sell things or mm -hmm. whether or not you're going to use a pattern or make your own or all that kind of stuff. 
Um, you know, what other kind of materials go into making uh, a plushie? Because I think one of the big th questions a lot of people have when they first learn about plushies is, what is this super soft thing mm. that I'm feeling here? And so like that, <laughs> along with a couple of like, I know that you have thread and other things like that. And we'll get into mm. machinery a little bit later. But like mm. what specifically when it comes down to materials, what are the simplest things that you would need to buy yeah. if you wanted to make your own plushie? If you want to make something really professional looking, um, what I use is uh, minky fabric. So it's pretty much just a very, very, very short fur that's almost so short that you can't really, you know, tell that it's that it's fur. Um, but yeah, that's what you would use on a finished plush. But when you're starting out, I would definitely recommend uh, fleece or something like that, which is a lot cheaper. Um, it won't sort of um, have that same softness or durability that the minky has, but uh, minky is quite expensive. So when you're starting out, I would definitely recommend sort of experimenting with at least your earlier um, pattern tests in fleece or something like that, just to save money while you're sort of sorting the kinks out of your pattern. Right. Like any other um, art form, it's going to take you a while to mm, get to a like, point you know, where you're really happy about it. You wouldn't go and spend, but, you know, thousands yeah. of dollars on watercolor paints when you're just learning yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. No yeah, one buys don't, professional don't artist grade graphics. oils. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like no one buys professional artist grade oils the first time they make an oil painting. Like, yeah. That is a mistake. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. you can, but, you know, as we mm. talk, it's very, very similar to how we talk about, like, it doesn't matter what art program you use, mm. you know, it's about the artist. There are many great artists out there who use MS Paint or anything like that, you know, so mm. the, the real skill when it comes to plushie making doesn't necessarily come in the materials that are used, mm. right? It's about I've your also experience. Seen, um, I've also seen some people make really amazing looking fleece plushies. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, yeah, it, as you said, it's not the materials necessarily, it's your skill in you know, forming and shaping those materials. That's that's like, going to bring you the most amount of quality. You know, like we're not going to lie. Mm. I, I I think that yeah. something made in Psy is is probably going to be a little bit better than something made the same thing made in paint. And similarly, mm. a plushie made with Minky is probably going to be a little bit better mm. than a plushie made with Fleece. But that's a very small well, percentage. It's especially to the when we're comparing digital mediums to like physical mm. mediums. Like this is very much a physical thing. Like people aren't yes. just uh, consuming it on like a computer monitor. Like it's a it's a tangible it's a physical like thing. physical thing yes. that I'm going to be touching and petting and like feeling as I pet my squeaky plushie but um <laughs> like this is made of like minky and like fleece I know it's a little bit more stretchy than minky isn't it like it, it yeah, has its flaws different. in comparison to the other like to, to this fabric which is like objectively superior but at the but same then, time I believe yeah. the majority still comes down to the skill in making mm. it right I think, yeah the point is like if you're if you're starting and you're learning to, like to make plushies you shouldn't go out and buy the overly superior material mm. and then botch it and make a horrible mm. expensive plush like learning uh step yeah. like you should buy the learning material be comfortable with it and then like move to the more expensive thing or else you're just mm -hmm. wasting money and then when you're sort of more confident in your pattern in fleece then you can jump over to testing in Minky because Minky, um, it's probably cheaper in the States, but with shipping, you know, I'm probably paying $30 a meter for Minky, whereas mm -hmm. Fleece you could probably get for $3 a meter or something like that. So, right, yeah. yeah. The, the price difference is, is huge. Mm -hmm. So, can you use the same patterns then for both materials? Like, there's not like a there different is a difference. stretch or whatever. Yeah, there is a, there difference. Is a difference. So, the stretch is uh -huh. different um, from fabric to fabric. So, if you can afford to, you know, go and spend a fortune and test everything in Minky, um, then might as well. Know, <laughs> might as well. <laughs> yeah, and good on like you. These I days, wish I could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> these days, I test everything in Minky probably because I know I'll be doing less tests. So, mm. you know, I know that I'm probably only going to need to tweak a couple of little things. Um, from the test to my final plushie. So it's not that big a deal for me to use Minky um, mm -hmm. as opposed to when I was very first starting out and I might need, you know, 20 tests or something to make a pattern. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus you've got bins yeah. and bins full of offcuts. Yeah, that's true. And I also have <laughs> um, probably like 200 meters worth of bolts of, of it in different colors. So <laughs> I sort of, um, you know, as you, you know, I do it full time. So obviously I've got to look for the cheapest option. So, um, eventually you can look at buying it in bulk if you know if you wanted to do that sort of thing yeah. right right so you got you also, got minky mm -hmm. we got uh patterns mm -hmm. 
and what are the other materials then that we can that we could like that you have to use really because mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like it seems like minky makes up probably the majority mm. of the materials in the actual plushie right mm. it really does and like the rest of the stuff is you know just your basic things like scissors needle thread um filling you know, I, I suppose yeah stuffing but you know all that's pretty generic like you, i'm not going to say you have to have this brand or um you know that sort of thing um most of your generic stuff will work for um plushy making so what you can make like, a mm. can i stuff no, it with love you... <laughs> <laughs> Finish your thought. not on this podcast <laughs> Go ahead, yeah what were you we saying ben Oh, I was just gonna ask. Uh, when you mentioned thread, like, uh, mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm sure like all threads very similar. Mm -hmm. But is do you have any kind of like tips on thread that you should buy, like when starting? Mm -hmm. Like, is like if you have like a it like a not good type of thread, like will it break mm -hmm. too much, or it can, maybe you yeah. need a, like a thickness or like a color or something? I would um advise just going out and buying like a reasonable quality black and white, and that's all you need for. You know, unless you're doing um, like colored lines, like line detailing on top of your plush just for sewing, all I use is black and white. Um, because if you sew your seams professionally enough and you brush them out and finish them nicely, you're not going to see the thread. So on dark plushes, I use black and on light plushes, I use white. So, Plus it's um, cheapest. Okay. Mm. <laughs> um, so I just go out and buy bulk. Um, I would definitely recommend going to an actual sewing store, sort of not so much a big chain. So um, definitely those smaller stores, people are more willing to sort of advise you and, and take mm. more time to advise you which threads to buy. Um, but yeah, just pretty much as long as it doesn't um, snap when you're holding it, that's one big thing. So, so yeah. what about, for example... You know, I'm taking a look at mm -hmm. the the plushie uh, of my character that you made, mm -hmm. and you know, there is detail like there's the eyes, which we're gonna get to mm -hmm. in a minute, which is yeah, embroidery, yeah. correct? Yeah, that's um, different. Yeah, but there's also there's also <laughs> I'm noticing that there's little colored thread nostrils, and the mm -hmm. horn also has the rings around mm -hmm. it. Is that also just a type of embroidery then? It is. The nostrils are embroidered as when the eye is done, uh, but the mouth and Oh, the, the horn is embroidery, but the mouth is just using the same embroidery thread, but that's done by hand. So it's done with a big needle um, okay. and manually stitched onto the plush as opposed to the rest of it, which is done with an embroidery machine. And the okay. horn is also embroidered then? It looks yes, like this, it is. very similar. Okay. Yeah. So when I, I guess... Very, I guess... Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, when I was very first starting out, I just did the same thing with the mouth um, onto the horn, so it was just you know using the pressure of that coloured thread to sculpt the the shape, the you know swells in the horn. But you know as you progress with your style, I prefer to do embroidered horns now. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, I have a question. When mm -hmm. you said you do like the seams and stuff, you said mm -hmm. to brush them out. What does mm -hmm. that mean? So mink minky is pretty much a very very short fur, and when you sew fur together. Um, some of it's going to get tucked into the seams. So if you look at a plush um, just as it's been sewn, you're going. the seams are going to be really obvious and there's a really obvious line um, where the seams are. So what you need to do is either get um, a sewing needle or I use a cat hair brush and you're just going to mm. gently brush and tease the fur out of the seams. So that reduces their visibility um, and okay. makes it look a lot more professional. So you can almost get it to a point where you can barely see the seams anymore because the you know the fur um mm -hmm. is nicely fluffed up yeah hmm. very cool should probably okay. say that it's it's fake plastic fur it's not animal fur yeah it's definitely no, <laughs> yeah, it's I, go, I shave unicorns you know <laughs> Just a, synthetic shave so, unicorns uh, to make unicorns yeah. Yeah. so you sacrifice goats and then yeah. you shave unicorns yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very fitting of the Mabel sticker on your sewing machine thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, embroidery is mm. kind of, it, I mean, plushie making isn't exactly an easy thing to do, but it seems mm. like embroidery is kind of the most detailed mm. part of the plush, and that's kind of the cutie mark, and the eyes especially. So, you know, as yeah. we're talking about, we talked about materials, but now we're getting into a little bit more technique and machinery, right, with, with like yeah. embroidery machines. Mm-hmm. And that's also so, yeah. um, one of the most expensive parts of getting into professional plushie making. Um, I was saying to you guys before we started recording, uh, in the States, 
um, you know, you guys are pretty lucky um, because your machines, you, you know, you can start out with a machine, embroider a machine at about $300. Over here in Australia, they probably start at about $1,500. Um, wow. Okay. So, so it's really okay. not something that you want to buy if you haven't uh, made a lot of plushes and know that you want to do this uh, professionally. Mm. It's, and, it's something uh, you need to commit investment. to. Yeah, yeah. So I thought I'd bring up uh, one of my favorite plushy artists, um, Firefly Twinkle Toes, uh, and she does applique, which is, uh, I'll quickly talk about, an alternative to embroidery. Hmm. So if you look at her work, uh, she doesn't use an embroidery machine. All these little lines and all her eyes and such are uh, stitched on using different colored fabrics. So that's, you know, that shows you uh, with enough practice, you can do something that looks as good, if not better, um, than you know what what it would uh, what an, a thousand dollar embroidery machine would make. Yeah, we were just um, chatting mm. before the show about it, and like I believe in both of our opinions, like mm. the applique eyes look better than a machined eye because if like there's definitely really something. Well. Yeah, yeah, if if it's done well and like by someone who's very skilled, like Firefly mm. Toes, like probably your first time since we're talking about like people yeah. getting into plushie making your first time, it's probably not going to look that great. But it has the potential to look mm. really, really good um, as an alternative. And we're also talking mm. about you know like making your own pattern unique. Like that's definitely mm. a choice you can make. Is like instead of uh, machining eyes or something, mm. you can get them applied. That being said, though, uh, if you do need eyes like mm. machined, um, mm. I believe there's lots of people out there who already have uh, like embroidery machines who would be mm. willing to do a, like an eye pattern or something on a piece of fabric for you mm. uh, for like mm. probably a very very small amount of money yeah, um, even people on DeviantArt I can mm. think of a few names there's also but, um, people that will um, embroider like full you know you buy the pattern and the embroidery so all you have to do is sew it together if you wanted to do mm. that sort of thing just to like practice your sewing skills mm. yeah or if you just wanted to have a professional looking plush but you don't have the skill to, you know, do those eyes and make the pattern yourself sort of thing. Yeah. Make your own. It's like kind of like a, a little mini make your own. It's, yeah. like, it's like what they do nowadays where they'll have meal services where you sign up for this meal mm. service and they send you all of the ingredients and stuff and the recipe. <laughs> and then they say, all right, you just make need it. to follow these instructions, yeah. make it, you know, it's almost <laughs> similar to that. Mm. Mm. Cool. But, um, you know, that's just an alternative if you don't want to spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on an embroidery machine. Mm. But obviously, you mm. know, most professional plushie makers do use an embroidery machine. It's it's much easier than doing applique, applique uh, which is what Firefly Twinkle Toes does. Uh, you have to be very skilled and very patient, um, you know, to get those eyes looking as perfect as they do. Whereas your mm. embroidery machine, if you have uh, the right software, you're pretty much just tracing as if you were making a vector uh, and then export exporting that into your machine as a file mm -hmm. and then it will stitch it out for you so i guess it's quicker uh, and you have a lot more uh, freedom with your design so really it's just like I, I draw my designs as vectors in in photoshop um, i make like puppets pretty much um, for my eyes and and if i want to make it an expression i just have to change you know the shapes uh, in that puppet and then trace over it in my embroidery software and then send plug it straight into the machine and that's your eyes uh, that's your eyes you know mm -hmm. done for you pretty much yeah. Yeah. i can't even imagine the amount of hours that have gone into this this vinyl scratch the uh, all the all the applique that is done on this mm -hmm. like all, all the all the yeah. little individual stitches all done by hand on the eyes and the the cutie mark and stuff and yeah. i mean she yeah. uses a sewing machine like a, just a regular sewing machine for that i'll say as well so this is uh, her eyes uh, and the applique I'm talking about is done with just your regular sewing machine and you can get those for very cheap. So your machine mm. only needs to be able to do a zigzag stitch, which pretty much even your most basic machines will be able to do. Hmm. And very you can cool. do that sort of thing. Hmm. Yeah. I have another question. Um, mm -hmm. When, like, I guess even starting out, like, if I wanted to, like, make, mm -hmm. a, like, a, make a good-looking plushie, like a plushie mm -hmm. that I could put on my shelf and be pleased with, but, like, mm -hmm. I made it, um, would like buying a sewing machine be sort of like necessary like mandatory or could i do the whole thing by hand you could do it by hand but it would take you days as opposed to <laughs> uh, you know it would take a really really long time so Probably weeks instead of days yeah exactly um so you could um and your plush could if your stitching was you know um not sloppy it would probably look just as good as the machine sewn 
plushy, but it's going to take you so much longer. I imagine so, the like yeah. the room for error sewing something by hand, you know, like trying mm. to be consistent throughout the entire plush. Mm. Yeah. Would, especially mm. being a new plushy maker would be much more of a challenge than just like forking out some money for a decent sewing machine. Like sometimes... Sometimes hand sewing can be a lot better because you have more control of like aligning your fabric um, mm -hmm. and aligning points on your pattern, which is important. So with your sewing machine, it does take like an extra level of confidence. And, you know, even on my patterns, I still do a tiny bit of hand sewing in some areas that are, you know, too small or too fiddly uh, to do with my sewing machine. Mm -hmm. So there's sort of advantage, you know, ideally you would do both. Um, so if even if you can just afford, you know, a very basic entry level sewing machine, that's all you need really. Uh, mm -hmm. and that will speed up your production and, and just make it a lot more enjoyable unless you really enjoy hand sewing for hours and hours and hours and hours. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I do I do know that in a lot of places in the US you can buy mm -hmm. um like used sewing machines mm -hmm. and things like that. Uh especially like Craigslist is your friend, um, mm -hmm. if you are actually kind of on like on a budget for that type of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even uh, even, big, even Big W here is now selling them. You yeah, could probably sure. get sewing like, machines are very common. Mm, yeah. You could probably get like a, a Kitty's first sewing machine for like forty bucks or something like that. Yeah. An easy sew, yeah. yeah, like an easy bank oven, <laughs> an easy sew, <laughs> yeah. easy sew, easy sew oven. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, you know, we're talking about sewing machine embroidery. Those are kind of like the most complex um, mm -hmm. machines that you'll need, but also really common ones. Um, so what a, let's just rapid fire down some of the other tools that you might need or maybe even just tools that are kind of nice to have. So let's kind of go through a, a quick list of those. Okay. I'll go through um, some of your more basic stuff. So obviously uh, different needles for hand sewing thread. You're going to need pins. So pins are really important because pins are what uh, holds your template, your pattern together when you're sewing it. And minky is very slippery. Uh, so you want to use a lot of pins. That's something you'll learn very quickly when sewing minky. So you want to sort of force those, uh, the edges of your stencil, your pattern to stay together. Uh, I use glass head pins, which are really durable. They're nice and thin. They're not too bulky. And I just have hundreds and hundreds of them. Um, what else can you have? You, uh, I already mentioned scissors, I think. Um, and really that's all you need for your very basic sort of stuff. And then you can go into, um, you can get conditioners for your thread. You can get a hot glue gun if you want to attach tiny little pieces to your plush. Uh, you can get different rulers, different accessories for your machine, different feet for your machine. I would definitely recommend getting a walking foot, which is a type of uh, foot uh, that you buy for your machine and it uh, feeds the minky through much easier and makes things much easier for you sewing a plush. So that's one investment I would definitely recommend if you're going to be sewing with minky. Uh, and then you can get on to uh, more elaborate accessories like airbrushes and, and things like that. So the list is kind of endless. I've probably spent thousands of dollars on just little knickknacks for... Um, for plushie making pretty much so you know there's dozens and dozens that i have on my desk that i could go through but yeah it's <laughs> kind of whatever whatever you think it will help you uh achieve the result you're looking for yeah and you mentioned as well like like the, a lot of this is a lot of this is based in sewing so you know you don't mm -hmm. necessarily need to go to a plushie maker to learn where no. to get these tools or anything like that there's huge 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 resources out there for just mm. basic sewing right so and I'm even, sure you can um, probably go there as well. There's huge resources with uh, people that make teddy bears, like that are sort of outside our sort of, you know, fandom plushie making. There's so many people that make teddy bears. Um, and there's huge forums filled with, you know, um, people making things and asking questions. And there's just so many resources out there. If you look, you will find it. And it's right. the same sort of theory, yeah. right? Making making a teddy bear as opposed to making a pony. Mm. It's the same sort of it's, thing. It's just like the yeah. original plushie. Yeah. Mm, exactly. Yeah. Do you have one of those giant pony face stabbing needles? The really yes, long ones? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> I remember They're seeing a photo on. from someone. Mm. I'm not sure it if it was you or me, someone I don't else. Know. <laughs> They're pretty scary looking. Um, They're called doll needles and... Uh, I have a, a few, but one of them is like a foot long, like they're really long, sort of thick needles. And you use them for things like uh, putting the mouth on the ponies. So you'll, you'll thread that, um, that long needle. And because you have such a, you know, you couldn't puncture through the entire pony's head 
with just a little hand sewing needle. So you need like a massive one to, to stab oh, through. I see. So, mm. yeah, Did so you that's have to a good use one. your foot long needle for like the mouth on your rainbow dash, like the really, really large one? Or did yeah, you do that yeah, in a exactly. different way? No, I did. That was just big enough to uh, to do her mouth, and and then I, you know, on her because you're scaling everything up. I used uh, a thread that's probably closer to a yarn for her mouth. It's not quite a oh yarn. My. But it's like yeah. it's like mm. a very um, thick, dense thread. So if I turbo just thread, used, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> if I just used embroidery thread, which is very, very thin, you wouldn't have seen the mouth on her. It, you know, it wouldn't show up on uh, on how how big her face is. So yeah, it's funny. Wow. Yeah. So do you put the mouths on then like once the the entire plush is put together? Mm-hmm. Or yeah. Is... yeah. Yeah. And there's also people who embroider the mouth. My pattern doesn't let me do that because uh, you have to have a uh just one seam at the front of the where the mouth goes. Mine has three, so I can't embroider over all of them. But yeah, there's you know, there's different um most people will just do it with a doll needle and thread, but you can also do embroidery depending on what style you're going for. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, now we've talked a little bit about the tools, the materials, you know, getting started there. Um, there's there's also kind of a whole world that a lot of people won't get into, but I thought it would be interesting to talk about. Uh, and that's talking a little bit more about the sales side of it, because as you mentioned mm. before, you work in this for uh, like a full time job. And so mm. a lot of that is promoting that sales, that's pricing your wares, mm. that's, all, you know, calculating how much you've you how much time you've put in versus how much your materials cost versus anything like that. Mm. So, you know, I, I don't know even where to start in this topic, so I'll let you lead off on there. But do you want to just talk to us a little bit more about the sales side of things? Definitely. I thought I'd start off with uh, linking you guys to a couple of photos of a chrysalis that I made. And I, you know, will show off kind of uh, what photo editing can do for your plushie making. And I think, in my opinion at least, uh, your photos are just as important as the quality of your plushie. Because if you make a fantastic plushie and take a terrible, terrible photo, no one's going to look at it. So what's the point in, you know, What's the point in putting all that effort into making it look fantastic uh, if, you know, you don't show it off to the best of your ability? Um, I use a SL, Canon SLR camera. You don't have to. You can, you know, um, most of your phones take pretty good photos these days. But uh, I would definitely recommend sort of bringing it into Photoshop. And you can see, looking between these two photos, I've obviously... Uh, you know, I've put a, a nice background on it. I've lit it nicely, but then I've gone in and I've tweaked the colours and I've made, you know, the background nice and uniform. And, and uh, presenting your plush uh, in the, you know, with your photographs is super important to getting your name out there um, just as much as, uh, you know, you really need to promote yourself and you need to build uh, a following so you can make a really awesome plushie and have no followers on the internet and post it up and you know maybe a few people will see it but you're not going to be able to profit as much as you is as if you had you know hundreds or thousands of watches uh, that are going to see what you put out there straight away yeah. this is such a cool kind of like these two photos are really cool side mm. by side because whenever I see it's very um, typical of plushy artists to have this kind of like fabric background mm color thing that looks very nice and you've done some great photoshop work here but i'm i'm glad to see that it's a there's a realistic scenario behind it because mm. i just imagine that plushy makers have this room where nice. the walls and the floor are just fabric you know yeah. and like that's what i always see <laughs> my photo room yeah. and so now it's it, you can see a little bit more clearly here how you use photoshop to extend out mm. the fabric your fabric only goes so wide in fact mm. in the chrysalis one it doesn't even cover all the tail so you have to i photoshop was gonna say you out. need a bigger piece of fabric yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it always makes it seem like there's yeah. just like this room of fabric mm. whereas here it's it's not the case and you've done a lot of work to make it look as good as it is mm. and you know if i just made her and got and you know put her on the floor in a poorly lit room with a bunch of rubbish behind her and taken a photo you know with the flash on my iphone it would have looked terrible right. so you know just that basic you know all it is is a piece of fabric you know pinned to a wall um, with a bit of Photoshop and, you know, that's all you really need. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I know when uh, Firefly Tingle Toes was first taking pictures of her plushies, she mm. still, and she didn't have like fabric backgrounds and stuff, but mm. she had a decent camera with a lens mm. that used, uh, what is it? What, remind me, Ted, like depth of focus, like where mm. everything behind it was blurry. What was that yeah. called? 
the aperture uh, or whatever aperture yeah. Yeah. yeah so she would take uh, out the plushies and she would bring them into like really nice natural sunlight so like the whole mm-hmm. thing was lit by like diffused light and then yeah. she would take a picture where only the plushie was in like really big high detail and then everything behind it was then blurry so it didn't detract mm. from like the plushie so you couldn't see like the houses or the bushes or the trees or whatever like behind the plushie but it, it made for really really nice like professional quality mm. pictures where she was just literally going in her backyard putting mm. it in the sunlight and like taking a picture you know and i just use natural lighting on mine i don't have any studio lights or anything so you know i'm not going to fork out money for that when i can just go out you know choose a nice time of, to time of day like don't go in the middle of the day when the sun's blaring you want um you know sort of soft light so in the morning or in the afternoon or on an overcast day or something like that so you're not going to get ugly hard shadows on your plushie so it's just you know that's just a basic tip for you know taking good photos and then you can always edit that um <laughs> you can always edit that in photoshop later i will sometimes you know get a brush and just put um you know highlight some of the shadows out of the plush to sort of bring it to what it would look like uh in a real life scenario like with those colors that pop and and you know seeing it um making it look as best as you possibly can yeah mm-hmm. yeah presentation <laughs> is very very important mm. mm-hmm. so uh you know presentation is one thing um mm. But, you know, presentation, as we're talking about, is something that mm. you will do not just to I mean, you could do it just to show off. Uh, but mm. a lot of the times you do it to make it look, you know, like an attractive thing that people would want to buy. Mm. Right. So yeah. I guess I guess there's also an aspect of the sales side of it. Um, transactions with money and, and you know, I, I don't even I don't mm. know anything about it. You know, I don't know if you have to take certain tax laws into account. I don't know how international sales go, all that kind of stuff. So I know. um Obviously, it's going to vary from country to country, but here in Australia, you can make, I think, up to $20,000 off a hobby before you have to declare it, uh, you know, for tax purposes or as a business or anything. So unless you're, you know, I'm not sure what the laws are in Canada and the States and such, but, you know, obviously look them up for depending on where you are. Um, But most of the time, if you're just doing this on a small scale, you don't really have to worry about, you know, taxes and that sort of thing. Uh, it's only when you do this more professionally and start selling a lot of plushies uh, that you have to take that in con- into consideration. So I have an Australian business number, uh, and to set up as you know as a freelance artist in Australia is pretty simple. You just have to ring up and say, "Hey, can I have an Australian business number?" Um, and they'll pretty much give it to you straight away. Um, <laughs> you do need to have the accent, though. You yeah. need to prove that you're Australian. You need to be able to talk the, talk the talk. There's but some yeah, things you have to say yeah. over the phone that we can't say on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously, um, me doing this full time and I make a lot of plushies. Um, and this is my full time income. I have to take into consideration like bookkeeping and um, that sort of thing as well, which most people don't have to worry about. But that's not very and tax write offs. Mm. Well, that's that's one good thing. I can write off, you know. If I want to buy a sewing machine, I can write it off on tax. Or if I want to buy, you know, um, if I want to buy a plushie, I can claim it as as research sort of thing and write <laughs> it off on tax. So, yeah. Nice. So there's lots of cool write offs you can do. You know, even if you you were just a traditional artist, you can claim a lot of things. But I'm How about lucky. A business trip to of... the states to to uh, get Mickey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might be cheaper. Who knows? <laughs> I've had yeah, my boyfriend suggested that to me before, but I'm not sure how far I can stretch that, you know, stretch that <laughs> friendship sort of thing. Yeah. Also, also, I'm not sure, like, if you were to come over to to the mm. states, I'm not sure how many suitcases you could bring. Like, you came mm. here, you came here with eight empty suitcases, <laughs> but you left with twelve full ones. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I sort of envy you guys because you guys can go to you know all the big pony cons and such but yeah for me to come over and you know as john knows as well it's, it's not cheap to come over and, and to right. bring you know <laughs> to bring huge amounts of baggage is not cheap either so really no. it wouldn't, unfortunately it's not really feasible for me to come over and and sell plushies at a big convention or something so you yeah. yeah. yeah, have we, to come over yeah. as a like a you know What's like it? a leisure thing Mm, I would just come over, you know. I'd probably bring bring one plushie to, you know, carry around with me at the con. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna <laughs> hey, I mean, be able to. Like, yeah. gas is getting cheaper. You can just buy a boat. <laughs> you just buy a boat. <laughs> just sail around the but world. The, yeah. Burn the cost of taking that time off of work also factors mm. into it too. Yeah. Right? Well, Unless you want to work, you can just make, make a plushie boat. boat. It'll be fine. 
<laughs> Basically, the business expense. Boat. <laughs> yeah. Business expense an entire. Boat. I need to take. I need yeah. to. I need to transport my own plushies into America. This is a business expense. Yeah. So, um, because you do international sales, uh, mm. I, I'm assuming that you just use something like PayPal for your. Yeah. Yeah. For your. Sales. I just use PayPal, and I, you know, I get everyone to pay me in Australian dollars, um, which is good for especially people in the states because our dollar is like. Um, one Australian dollar is like you know, it's sixty cents Australian dollars to one American dollar. So it yeah, makes tell me my, about it. Yeah, it makes my work a lot more affordable. Unfortunately, it makes my material costs a little bit more. But then you know, a lot more people are buying my stuff, so it kind of you know, it's six of one, half dozen of the other sort of thing. Right, yeah. and you can also you can also list your things at at a higher price because mm. you know it's yeah. not as big of a deal for American buyers to to have to pay that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, and I also, you know, one thing to consider if you're going to be, uh, you know, uh, get, taking commissions is to cover yourself with like a terms and conditions. So make sure, mm. you know, uh, before people commission you, make sure they agree to a, a list of terms and conditions. Like, you know, you're not going to um, refund the plush when it's totally finished or, you you know, you might want um, 50 or 100% deposit before you start or, you know, all that sort of thing. So just covering yourself financially if you're going to be doing this, um, you know, as a, a means of making some money. Yeah, I guess I guess yeah. at this point this is a little bit less plush specific and more just like, hey, good yeah. business, freelance artist yeah, who needs yeah. to learn this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, but that. you know, it's something people need to remember as well because you know, right. um, mm -hmm. people starting out might not think of that sort of thing, and then it, yeah, it's really painful to get burned by you know a nasty commissioner sort of thing. Mm. So yeah, burned yeah. is mm. painful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of uh, costs and prices, mm -hmm. uh, and painful burns and <laughs> painful burns. <laughs> um, do you want to talk about? The reason why plushes like yours cost so much, because I'm sure you've had it before where people have gone, oh, why are your prices so expensive? I can go buy yeah. one from Kmart for $15. Kmart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of people um, don't sort of understand the work that goes into them and they don't understand the difference between something that's handmade and something that's uh, mass produced. Um, so, you know, those plushes that cost $20 uh, in Kmart are probably made in a factory with, you know, hundreds of workers being paid minimum wage using crappy material that's bought in bulk and all that sort of thing. So you're paying for, you know, you're paying for um, a craftsperson's time. So I know in Australia, you know, if I was just to go work at McDonald's or something like that, my wage would be $20 an hour. So if it takes me 40 hours to make a plush, um, I want to be earning at least minimum wage sort of thing, and which right. is one thing that, you know, um, they take a lot of time. So ponies can take anywhere, you know, depending on what you're making, a beanie might only take you, you know, four hours or something. But then you, you look at Life Size Rainbow Dash, she took me a month working full time to make pretty much. Um, mm. So you need to sort of account for how much time is going into it. And, you know, artists deserve to be paid by the hour, um, just like anyone else pretty much. Uh, and then, you know, you look at your fabrics, um, fabrics also, ex and all your materials are expensive. So as I said, you know, I might be paying $30 a meter for Minky and then all your, um, your sewing machine, you know, you have to consider what you outlaid for your embroidery machine, sewing machine, um, taking care of them. So not only their purchase, which in my case was, you know, probably for my embroidery and sewing machine together was about four thousand dollars you also have to think about um servicing them and keeping them in good condition and mm, yeah. uh you, you, your, the utilities of your business sort of thing so and as well you're sort of um you're paying for the artist skill so obviously you're going to be paying more uh to someone who's been doing it for a long time and has you know a unique style as compared to someone who's using a pre-made pattern and doesn't have much experience and it's just the difference between you know um you know, the professionalism that goes into the plush, um, which, you know, uh, you're going to be paying more for greater quality, essentially. So that's yeah, just I a think, bunch of things that go into it. I think yeah. a lot of the times when people think mm. about plushes, and I know I, mm. you know, I mm. everybody falls in this trap with different products. But for example, mm. something that I didn't consider is you don't really understand the value of something until you consider how much time is put into it and translate exactly. that into hours you're working, right? You mm. know, when you look at a plush and you go, that plush is $800, that is mm. insane. What mm. you're not thinking, you're thinking of it from like, 
a just toy. the value yeah. of like a toy right exactly mm. but when you think about the number of hours that gets put into it and you go okay well mm. if someone works 40 hours like a regular work week mm. on it right and they want to be paid approximately like you said 20 us mm. do- or 20 mm. not us dollars but 20 australian dollars yeah. for it right and it costs mm. 800 australian dollars mm. like you do the math and it's like oh mm. okay this is actually technically mm. paying them less than that because then they have the material costs mm. and, and everything like that so exactly you know, like th- this stuff adds up quickly. You know, mm. when you work at a part time job, you make a lot of money. Mm. You know, you make hundreds of dollars within a couple of weeks. It's, you know, it adds up very, very mm. quickly. Uh, and, and so, you know, you really have to take a second and kind of view it from that perspective and then suddenly go, oh, well, this makes mm. perfect sense. And then you start going, how the heck are these other people making money? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of people that start off don't make money because they, you know, they haven't. You know, they don't have the understanding of how much they should be paid for the work they're doing, which is unfortunate. So, yeah, a lot of you know, new plushy makers fall into that trap. Um, mm. You know, they might think it's awesome to make $100 off a plush, but it might have taken them a whole week to make that and cost them, you know, $80 in materials or something like that. You're not so. really There's, there's also the difference that. between yeah. full-time job like yours and doing it yeah. as a hobby. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I guess, yes. you know, people should still be paid for their time. I guess it depends right. on, you know your choice as an artist how much you're willing to sacrifice um or how much you're willing to charge um yeah 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 everybody's in a different position there you know the the Mm. you know we talked a little bit about kind of the more mass-produced ones and why they can be Mm. such a low cost and it make and it makes sense because you you when you mass produce something it's just kind of Mm. you you churn them out and you have these pre-made patterns and things like that uh, there, there are a couple of notable ones that, you know, mm. as because we're exploring other people's plushies as well, you know, there are some ones out there like Cutie Corral and 4DE, which are probably the two most famous ones, mm. you know, and, and it really does come down to what you're talking about before. These ones aren't bad plushies or anything, but you're you mm. what you're paying for when you go to someone like you or when you go to someone like Firefly mm. or when you go to someone like White Dove or all of these mm. other big names that charge a lot you're 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 paying for the quality and you're playing you're paying i love the way you said you're paying for the artisan skill mm-hmm. because that's exactly what you're doing when you get a 40e plushie you know nothing against 40e plushies burns got six i've got <laughs> one like ted i think has one or two I have one. i've got yeah. a cute um, corral one you know we like them naz has mm. no problem with them naz likes them i think they're really cute yeah yeah mm. but the, let's be honest I, I turned around looked at the rainbow dash that rainbow dash is the exact same as every other rainbow dash that's been sent out you know, mm-hmm. um, and so and it's you know, it's it's cute, but it's not something unique. It's, you know, you, you can't go to 40 E and request an OC My for ten dollars <laughs> extra, you know, like that's yeah. not a thing that you can do. And so you really are paying for the the skill and and being able to get custom things mm-hmm. requires you to go to someone who's going to do it for you custom. Leave, you know like yeah. and, and that's why those kind of things are so expensive it and, the abil- and the ability to actually talk to like the person mm. who's making it like talking yes. to the artist who's making the pleasure like i'm yeah. sure now as you talk to your commissioners all the time about mm. stuff that they they like what they don't like what they want to change it's stuff a blessing and a curse you put in yeah because yeah. <laughs> it depends on the customer yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah exactly everything's custom so you know you can't say you know i want to you know, four foot tall rainbow dash with a jacket and different colors, and I want glowing my red eyes embroidered onto its hoof, and yeah, and, mm-hmm. you know, pay you one hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, you're just paying for, um, you're paying for a person's skill rather than a factory that ha- you know that doesn't really care about your specific needs. They're just pumping out a product. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they serve diff- they serve fundamentally mm. different purposes right they're yeah. even though they look very similar a mm. lot of the times they really do serve fundamental different yeah. purposes i'm at a con or you know i i you know i've got these big expensive plushies thanks to mm. the generosity of a friend um but you know that a lot of the times i don't have a lot of extra money to spend on this kind of stuff mm. and I, I would love to i'd love to spend the money on something like that but i don't have it and so when the 40e plushie comes around you know mm. that's what 45 dollars maybe um you know it's 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 25 it's, well it's canadian pretty, yeah. um yeah, including oh, yeah. shipping and stuff is probably like 60 uh, but yeah. that that's a lot of a, ch- a cheaper option and so they just kind of f- 
they really do fill like different fundamental needs. It's like when you're talking earlier about these beanie plushies or mm -hmm. there's a lot of different artists that make smaller little things that mm. don't take as much time. You know, they might all be in the realm of plushy, but really when you think about it, they're, they're servicing different people with different monetary needs and ranges of prices and things like that. And you know, um, not being able to afford plushies is why I got into it in the first place. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, well, sort of, um, I saw awesome people like Space Voyager, who's now Planet <laughs> Flash, and, and Firefly Twinkle Toes, and uh, um, all sorts of people. And I just, you know, I thought their work was awesome, but, you know, to buy one plush was just holy crap. Like, so Especially because you're in Australia. Mm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, I had an artistic background, and I just thought, you know, um, even if I had to teach myself, that's something I want to do. And I would definitely say um, having that natural curiosity and wanting to research all of, you know, research plushies and research different materials and, and, you know, sort of that ability to be obsessed about it is a really good trait to have if you want to get into plushie making. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, we, I, you know, I think, I think we hit in this, we hit a pretty nice hour here talking about mm. how to make plushies, referencing other plushie makers, all all the kind of stuff that we want to hit into. It really did come down to a very nice hour mark. Um, I did want to give a little bit more time in case anybody else had burning questions, in case, uh, you know, Naz, you had anything else that you thought was really important to bring up. You know, I'll give us like five or ten minutes here uh, to talk about that. And then we'll wrap up and, uh, you know, promote your stuff as well. Yeah. Did you guys have any questions? Who's your favorite you've made? <laughs> Probably that sounded <laughs> that, that sounded like i'm sorry that, that sounded like you know like there's like a panel and like a cute little like six-year-old girl walks up and, and like it's like Slam a voice actor's down. panel you know it's like who's who's your who's who's your favorite character you know <laughs> but i didn't say character i said who was your favorite like, who's, that you've made who's, who's the favorite that you made it's just the way that you said it it was just like who's the favorite that you've made <laughs> it's like you, you got you got nervous talking to her <laughs> i think i fell it's asleep right. halfway through that question it, it was a very legitimate question i don't want to take that away it was a sure very you legitimate you question. won't take everything away from me <laughs> i do you, you so hate seeing me happy i do it's true can i sacrifice can i sacrifice joel instead of a goat if i want to make pleasure i'm glad we're ending the show i haven't talked to you anymore <laughs> 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 Anyways, I'll just make you lots of plushies. Right. His question: What was your question again, Joel? <laughs> who, who, who's your favorite you've made? Um, probably Nightmare Rarity. I reckon. Um, out of all of them I've made, and you know, it was unfortunate that I didn't make her for myself. But yeah, I sort of look at her yeah. and and think, you know, if, if I was to have one piece that sort of uh, showed off what I can do, I would say it would be her. She was just really awesome. Cause no. the hair, though. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know that, that your your insane. mouth your mouth yeah. said nightmare rarity, but you also said I reckon, and so I feel like your heart might lie in somewhere else, like Applejack. <laughs> no, 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 not Applejack. <laughs> wow! Well, all right. <laughs> I see how it is. I see how it is. I'm sorry, Ted. Definitely, one hundred percent not. <laughs> uh, so any, any any other questions guys uh what's the longest that you've worked on a plushie probably life-size rainbow dash and i think she took me about a month to make wow. um yeah. saying that you know that was the first time i'd made a life-size plushie so there was a lot of trial and error you know the first time you make something is going to be you know take the longest time so if i made her again you know she might only take me two or three weeks as opposed to four um mm -hmm. But yeah, she, you know, she she was a huge amount of time. Um, making life size plushies is a totally different ball game to making <laughs> little ones because you're not just making a plushie; you're making a structure sort of thing. So she has like a PVC skeleton and and weight supports mm. and such inside her. So yeah, it's it's very different from just making. You know, it's not just blowing up a small plushie. They're yeah, mm. they're really complicated. Why would you blow up yeah. a plushie? <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're building a you're like making a horse building <laughs> yeah pretty much. That's what you're doing. it's yeah. like a, yeah it's like a, a big heavy skeleton with fabric and stuffing on top I, I, so I it's like to... a, like the trojan horse basically yeah yeah mm. I, I have it's, to it's I full of little you. green army dudes <laughs> i have to ask you specifically about that you know like this might be this might be more personal so you can feel free to answer this however you want much as much detail as you want but you know you mentioned you took a full month like full time working on this 
Yeah. Like, just how how did you afford to do yeah. that? No, that's totally cool. Um, because I just moved out of home and I'd saved about twelve grand to sort of um, you know, move out and be financially comfortable. So I sort of had that wiggle room to you know not pick up work straight away after I moved. I sort of I didn't want to have the pressure of commissions just after I'd you know very first time living out of home, um, all that stress. So I just sort of I wanted see. to account for like a relaxing project. Um, hmm. for myself to do before I did start work again. Yeah. I see. I see. Okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Hmm. What is it with you Australians and saving money? You guys are so good at it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you, should t- you should tell us sometime. It's crazy. Well, uh, we Bernie, can't really travel. So. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You can't do uh, travel. Yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> um, no, I think uh, I asked most of the ones that I was curious about. Cool. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, you know, that does kind of wrap up what we were talking about here. Naz, was there anything else that you wanted to, you know, any more knowledge that you wanted to tell anyone who wanted to make a plushie or was interested in this kind of stuff? Is there any other essentials or did we hit all of them? I think we pretty much hit all of them. Like YouTube is your best friend. Um, you know, if you have, if you want to make plushies and if you have that natural curiosity, there is, you know, you could spend hundreds of hours on the internet just looking at tutorials. It, it's out there if you if you want to look at look for it. Um, yeah, you can always go to you know individual people might have tutorials or things like that. But uh, yeah, it's all out mm. there for anyone who wants to to start and you know who's willing to put in the effort. Yeah. Don't don't you have tutorials or at least vlogs mm. on your Patreon? I do. Oh, nice transition. <laughs> I do have it's it. not a nice transition if you comment on it. Ruined it. it. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, know what, you know what's a really nice transition, though? Dusk shine? Dusk shine. Dusk shine, Dusk shine transition. <laughs> my, my mic clipped really badly. <laughs> we did that specifically for you because we know that you love that. I Thank told you. you we were going to work it in somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Patreon. Did you want me to do my plugs or talk about Patreon? Yes, process, I would like you or? to do your plugs. Yeah. Okay. Both. Well, also, uh, in, both. I, the, question, both. the question was a real question, is that you, 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 did, you did do vlogs and tutorial stuff on your mm. Patreon, right? Mm. And, you know, you guys sort of inspired me to do that because I was really nervous talking, you know, talking online, talking to talking to no one sort of thing to make tutorials. So I've been practicing sort of through my Patreon. It's but not yeah, easy. I pretty much it's so hard. Yeah, <laughs> it I mean, hard. I do it every week talking to these guys. Mm. <laughs> talking to nobodies. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I started my Patreon, um, oh, how long ago? Maybe about six to eight months ago. And that's become like a fantastic source of income um, because it's pretty much totally based on plushie making and tutorials. So... So I post every single day, like, you know, one to three posts a day with work in progress pictures or tutorials or tips or articles that I find relevant to plushy making. And, um, and you know, I also make plushy tutorial videos and stuff like that. So hmm. there's definitely, you know, there's a fair few Patreons out there that do that sort of thing if, if you wanted to invest money into learning about how to make plushies. Hmm. Well, so now that you've talked like- about it, what is your Patreon? <laughs> <laughs> My Patreon is... Uh, let me just bring it up. It's patreon.com slash Nazi Goring. Um, and we'll then have that on I'm the Nazi <laughs> Goring everywhere apart from Facebook where I'm Nazi Goring Crafts. Um, so I have a uh, Facebook, uh, Tumblr, I'm Nazi Goring, Twitter, I'm Nazi Goring, Fur Affinity, I'm Nazi Goring, DeviantArt, I'm Nazi Goring. So you can find me. What about match.com? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't joined just yet on match.com i've been searching for your profile <laughs> that came out so much creepier than i intended <laughs> Woo! raise in the next room don't say anything <laughs> <laughs> sorry ted cool. i cut you off what were you so, saying no that's okay I, I was gonna say uh so it sounds like your patreon is like a really good uh kind of um central location for people mm. who want to get into plushie making to kind of go and and like mm. you know give you money but also learn kind of some tips and tricks on how to do it yeah well pretty much you know my general feed is open for a you know a dollar a month so if you want to chuck in a dollar a month that gives you access to you know um 30 to 100 posts a month sort of thing so i'm pretty much doing the researching for you um, giving you all those you know, tips and showing you good tutorials and things like that. So, hmm. yeah. Cool. 
Well, I'm, I'm glad to see that that's working really well. I, I love Patreon. Mm. I love the idea of Patreon. Despite all the memes, I still think yeah. it's an awesome service. The May Mays. So, <laughs> so long as people don't back out of their donations. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's 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 a whole other thing, so we won't get into that. Yeah, um, we won't get into that. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yep. So yeah, that is the plugs for you. Um. So uh, I mean, before we get into our plugs, just first of all, you know, thank you for all of this. You know, you you came onto the podcast and you you really took the lead here, and you have so much awesome information. You know, we're already going over time, and I could probably <laughs> we could probably go over even more if mm -hmm. we wanted to, but it was it was really awesome having you on. And I mean, you know, I want to say thanks to you guys. Like I know, you know, the podcast is going to end eventually, which I'm sad about, but you know, I appreciate what you guys have done so much. Like the podcast has just been a blast and I'm so happy to, you know, be on it and, you know, have been a part of it for a couple of episodes. Oh, I'm making Aww. a heart with my hands, but you can't see <laughs> because you're on the internet. <laughs> oh, well, we've always, in we've always enjoyed, I know, you know, sometimes, uh, we have met some fans and we've ended up becoming more than just like fans we've become mm. friends and you know we've talked about dave becoming that way and we've talked about a couple of other people who are fans about the, like agam nansar is another one and you're right up there as well in fact you you you've got an exclusive tier you're friends with us on facebook I yeah. 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 Like, like i get super, super irl friends <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah, I yeah, Joel. Real name. Joel's Joel's <laughs> been to your house and you like hung out with him and everything like that. Like that's yep. that's that that's exclusive to you. Usually people have to pay me for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah, thanks for coming on. But we are going to have to do our plugs. So, Joel, take it away. Uh, all right, so we've got a few places. Picado.tv slash crusaders, QDRCrusaders.tv not com, QDRCrusaders at gmail.com, youtube.com slash QDRCrusaders, QDRCrusaders at tumblr.com, facebook.com slash QDRCrusaders, and at QDRCrusade on Twitter. Cool. Yeah, I, I wonder, that was I wonder at what point, at what point do we stop doing that? Because now. the podcast is ending. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like well, next no, week. I mean, what's, we still have YouTubes. I guess we, go, I guess we do have the YouTubes. Yeah. What's funny that's is that it. Joel's insanely good at doing it now, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a so, that's a, how do you feel about the fact joel that you've acquired this skill that is really just useless <laughs> not, uh, his next that about job sums is, up my life his He's next job his boss is going to be like hey what are our uh, business contacts again and joel's gonna be like i got you <laughs> gonna, got you bro actually gonna slip in resume. a cutie crusaders at tumblr.com or something <laughs> like, what was that last one? Uh, <clears throat> nothing nice so, uh, so yes, as everyone has been mentioning, uh, we are ending the podcast soon, which is both sad and kind of a relief for us. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, real talk. No. <laughs> That's uh, good. I mean, look, look. We I'm can ready to do nothing on Friday, all right? <laughs> we, can, we can be per as professional as we want, but look, the, the fact of the matter is we're, we're ending the podcast at we f what we feel is like a, a good time for us, not just yeah. because it's a graceful time for everyone else, but because it's a good time for us. Um. And I, I, you know, I, Ted, I totally took the spotlight from you, but you can go to our DeviantArt account uh, to find more information about why we're ending. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and when we're ending and all that kind of stuff. Um, we still haven't picked a specific date, but it is going to be mm -hmm. sometime in March. So you know, there's only that. That's that's the next four weeks. Sometime within the next four weeks, we're probably going to be ending then. Um, so yeah, we'll have more okay. information there. Uh, we're going to be posting more stuff on our. Uh, DeviantArt journal. Uh, I'm gonna get these guys to post some stuff uh, there, so we're we're gonna be writing more about that. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, you know, look forward to to the last couple of episodes here. I guess this will be the last time we do plugs, other than YouTube, because meh, uh, you know, social social media. We're we're still gonna you know post some stuff there before we end, but but yeah, podcast is coming coming to a close. I like to be transparent about it, you know. Don't beat around the bush. Mm. My thing's just gonna say peace out. <laughs> all right well <laughs> you can do whatever you want with with your with your 15 minutes of fame there so i i did enjoy your comment on max's <laughs> journal <laughs> <laughs> it's good. That, that isn't that isn't even my official one that was like the general one so i'm yeah. gonna write up my old my my own thing because i'm a blabbermouth and i'm probably gonna record it and post as a rant or something which i know naz likes so she'll be I happy guess, to hear you. that <laughs> yeah all right well that is everything for the podcast uh we went a little bit long but i've realized another consequence of us ending is that we no longer need to be consistent so <laughs> woo! three hour podcast next week no we're not doing that i have so, my limits so five dust shine transitions in a row then yeah i mean the final can, ultimate dust look shine look 
we're gonna have to negotiate that down. I'm a mediator here. My client burned has formally uh, posted. Well, he's gone. Uh, he's like not here anymore. He's just he's just gone. Yeah, he's like burned checked out 20 minutes ago and is gone to like eat or something. Can I leave yet? <laughs> I, I've I've been paid for the allotted one hour. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I'm gonna, I, on behalf of my client burned. I'm going to state that you can do one last dusk shine transition, and when we come back from that, we're going to do our outros. So have at it. My contract is a call for this. <laughs> okay, three, two, one. Dusk shine transition. <laughs> And without further ado, my name is Rainbow Plasma. My name's Burned One. <laughs> my name is Flutter Guy Three Seventeen. I'm Atmos Spark. I'm Nazi Goring. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Bye.